Hello everyone, welcome to this lecture. This lecture is on culture, leisure and consumption. It's part of your paper on media, culture and society. In this lecture, we will discuss and uh, you will learn that the experience of film watching in a multiplex cinema hall is just not about leisure. You will learn about uh, economic and cultural processes that accompany the experience of film watching. You will also learn the industrial organization of leisure in India. The analysis of uh, the development of leisure industry will uh, give you an idea of the physical layout of the multiplexes. At the same time, it will also help you to understand the cultural mannerism attached to such physical layouts. You will learn that uh, simple experience of film watching is linked with the broader economic changes. This lecture will also equip you with a critical understanding of the middle class and its associated cultural values catered by the leisure industry. Overall, you will be able to decipher the cultural dimensions of leisure and consumption-led economy, providing the rationale for the multiplex operators. The lecture will assist you in understanding the interlinkages between the physical geography of the multiplex and, uh, and, and, and human geography. Also, we will discuss the multiplex cinema as a cultural site of leisure and consumption. Multiplex cinema signifies uh, the nature of uh, urban development, public culture and social change. We have selected multiplex cinema as they are central to the emerging new cultural patterns of leisure and consumption. Multiplex cinema is an intrinsic part of the entertainment industry. While saying this, we are not arguing that before the arrival of multiplex cinema, films were not, we were, were not means of leisure. But the arrival of multiplex cinema transformed the way films are produced, marketed and consumed. It represents a radical departure from the social practices associated with cinema in, in, in this country, in India. Multiplexes reflect the arrival of the global format of film distribution and exhibition in India. It is closely associated with the economic liberalization and branding of Indian nation as, uh, as a new signing economy. Multiplexes are central to economic and cultural expressions of this branding based on the ideology of consumerism. Therefore, um, multiplex being the product of the economic processes are also cultural technologies for the promotion and branding of what is called a superpower. It shows that the story of culture, leisure and consumption is about liberalization, branding of nation state, consumerism and middle class. Let us discuss all these elements in detail. First about the economy of leisure. Adrian Athik and Douglas Hill in their book uh, Multiplex in India, a cultural economy of urban leisure, they rightly state that if you want to discuss or understand the lived experience of multiplex, then we need to take into consideration the industrial economy of leisure in India. The emergence of multiplex in India cannot be understood without the logic of economic liberalization. Liberalization in simple terms means uh, realizing the restrictions of foreign investment and uh, relaxing licensing laws. In fact, uh, epithets of rising and uh, signing India are mobilized in support of an unfolding regime of economic liberalization, which began 
in the earnest in 1991, as, as we all know. Subsequently, the communicational apparatus of India started uh, um, branding and building the image of India as a dynamic, modernizing and capitalist economy marching on in the global economy. And this branding of new economy was going to be validated through new patterns of consumption associated with an aspirational middle class that has become increasingly um, uh, offered as a model of social progress. Lila Fonadis in her book uh, India's New Middle Class, she states that the urban middle class represents a hegemonic sociocultural embodiment of India and India's transition to a committed liberalizing nation. Therefore, multiplexes form a significant part of the emerging patterns of leisure and consumption certainly in urban India. And urban India includes up to the smaller cities. Multiplexes came into operation in the year 1997 in India and in the year 2001, the government of India granted the official status of industry to film business, indicating and recognizing the importance of entertainment leisure sectors. Therefore, multiplex cinema, the exhibition sector, financially drives the Indian film industry. The, corporate the corporatization of film business provides the immediate context to understand the multiplexes. Compared to the earlier disaggregated form of film exhibition in India, the new leisure industry is characterized by the domination of few players with integrated production, marketing and distribution chains. The first multiplex cinema in India, the PVR Anupam, the Priya Village Roadshow started in the district of Saket in New Delhi in June 1997 by PVR Limited which is the leading multiplex cinema exhibition company. PBR Limited was originally incorporated in 1995 through a joint venture between Priya Exhibition Limited and the local family of exhibition concern and the Village Roadshow Limited, which was a multinational concern of Australia. And that's how it has got its name PBR, Priya Village Roadshow. PBR Anupam was actually constructed by refurbishing an old theater into a multi-screen site. For PBR, it proved a successfully successful venture on, on account of its very strategic location. Located in a suburban commercial district with uh, manned security gates at its access points and surrounded by national and international retail franchise outlets, including McDonald's, Pajar Hut, Barista Coffee, Nerulas, Subway, Moti Mahal, Planet M, Lee, Reebok, PBR Anupam has proved highly popular with an upper middle class uh, crowd and has been one of Delhi's most profitable cinemas today. PBR Anupam's success inspired other players to explore the opportunities in the exhibition sector. After PBR, the Priya Village Road So Adlabs Films Limited entered into the business in the year 2000. It was mainly catering to the Western India and opened its first multiplex in Wadala, Mumbai in March 2001. Companies which had, uh, which had no history of working in the entertainment sector, they also started harnessing benefits from this business. Ionex Laser Limited is one of such multiplex companies which was a subsidiary of Gujarat Chemicals Limited. It was purely a gas company making refrigerators. The middle class emerged as the promoter and beneficiary of the policies of liberalization, privatization and globalization. The enthusiasm of the middle class to avail these new avenues of leisure indicates that multiplexes have promoted the box office value of middle class. It catered to the middle class values by producing middle class oriented films. Middle class melodrama and the values that it exposes 
becomes the core of the films. Along with this, it is argued that multiplex cinema was responding to a latent demand among the, amongst the upper middle classes for sufficiently sensitized and controlled public space where the behavior of the patrons corresponds with middle class norms and where the overwhelming numerical superiority of the mob is mitigated. At times it is argued that multiplex provide a secure and socially acceptable space, especially for middle class women who can enjoy out of home entertainment which was hitherto impossible in single screen cinema halls where men of lower strata occupy generally the space. However, these developments need to be seen critically. A critical reading would diagnose these conditions entirely in a different way, different manner. It is, however, the beginning of a more entrenched, narrow caste test cultures, separating the haves and have nots, the rich and the poor, and the new Indian economy and the fragmenting public. In their survey with the multiplex cinema going audience, Atsik and uh, Heal have come across responses like this. For instance, I quote, I couldn't watch films in other theaters. Companies, the environment of the other theaters would not be as good as that of the multiplex, as also the comfort of watching movies in the multiplex is very good. Environment consists of people the cleanliness of the place, etc." Unquote. Another person told them, within quote, because the crowd is not very cheap, it's more comfortable. What I see as comfort in my basic priority for entertainment. Another interviewee expresses this in these words, I quote, as multiplexes are more comfortable in a normal theater, it is very much organized, especially 90% of the crowd will be decent. Multiplexes are a huge advantage for ladies as ladies won't prefer to get squashed between a group of gents uh, which usually occurs in a small theater. So to avoid the chaos, it's better everyone choose multiplex. Even the sound quality is better, ambience is more and it's, it, it's very, very clean. Similarly, it is worth questioning what degree of access the vast majority women in India outside of the upper middle class are gaining to either, to, 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 to either the multiplex or the traditional cinema hall. The multiplex sector is harnessing the growth of the service sector in India that ensures that a bright future and further expansion of their business. It's because of these regions that multiplexes describe their customers as middle and upper income strata. Ed Labs uh, claims that the upwardly mobile youth with high dispensable income constitute the core of their patron profile. Similarly, IONX targets upper middle class audience, the leisure industry and the reorganization of cities. In order to understand how, how, how the changing political economy of leisure embodied by the multiplex in particular conversed with the contemporary upheaval that has become so visible in India's towns and cities. Hence the rise of multiplexes is overwhelmingly an urban story, certainly. Cities have been undergoing a reorganization with a rapid growth of shopping malls, car ownership, residential complexes, amusement parks, restaurants, bowling alleys, bars, nightclubs, and many other forms of pleasure. Multiplex cinema is intrinsic to this new leisure infrastructure. This significant growth is uh, entertainment uh, in the entertainment industry and uh, service sector in 1990s in linked with the liberalization of the Indian economy. The proliferation of the entertainment and leisure industry has contributed significantly to the creation of a distinctive lifestyle. The ideology of consumerism rests on lifestyle as a status maker of middle class identity. The new leisure infrastructure
specifically targets the worldly mobile urban middle class. Multiplex is not only a place for leisure, but also a site of commercial activities promoting and branding a certain kind of lifestyle based on consumerism. If you have ever gone to watch a film in a multiplex cinema, most of you must have, you must have noticed the kind of food and drinks you get to eat. The physical layout of the multiplex creates an ambience of being part of a certain kind of lifestyle. There are social conventions to behave in a certain manner. So, multiplex cinema is a complete package of sociocultural aspects of what is considered as being modern and a desired way of life. Multiplexes are not simply places to save films. They are one-stop shops for out-of-home entertainment that variously combine eating, gaming and shopping with the practice of watching films. This shows that the economic structure of the entertainment industry rests on certain kind of socio-cultural relations and the socio-cultural practices such as leisure display a complex economic organization. Pointing to the changing geography of cinema in urban India, Asik and uh, Hill argue that uh, multiplexes are constructed mainly in the suburbs that are situated along the route of new flyovers and uh, arterial routes. Suburbs are strategic locations. It is argued that the story of multiplex in India is nothing but a story of suburbanization. The relationship between suburbanization and multiplexing is demonstrated by Leila Fernandez when she argues that due to the exorbitant real estate prices, the middle class was pushed to move from the from the center of the city to suburban culture and, uh, and social communities. She cites the example of Bandra, which is the new upmarket suburbs in Mumbai, Maharashtra, witnessing the growth of upmarket restaurant, shopping enterprises, and movie theaters. Therefore, one can say that it's not adequate to perceive multiplex simply as a phenomenon associated with film watching. It has many cultural dimensions attached to it. This changing geography of cinema in urban India is indicative of the broader changes in the leisure economy today. In the previous era, when cinema was just beginning in India, the cinema halls were centrally located in elite, elite habitats. Subsequently, such popular facilities were constructed in relation to the areas of the cities where the mass crowds gathered, such as around railway stations, the bigger markets. Contrary to this situation, the contemporary phase multiplexes are constructed in the suburbs that are situated along the route of the new flyovers and aerial routes that are reshaping Indian cities. Of course, this implies that uh, these sites must be reached by um, private rather than public transport. This partial distribution, therefore, serves to further augment the segmentation of the film, film going today. Asik and uh, Hill draw attention towards the consequences of these economic and cultural processes for the poor people. Since the construction of multiplexes and its associated infrastructure, such as malls, flyovers, etc., they require the acquisition of large areas of land, it is quite obvious that the marginalized sections of the population obviously faced displacement. They were forced to relocate themselves as the periphery of the cities, you call it outskirts. The growing physical distance between the poor and the privileged was one of the prominent results of this process. The widening inequality prompted the self barricading of the privileged from the pervasive presence of poverty and deprivation. This argument is furthered by Lena Fernandes, who says that the changes in the lifestyle of middle classes 
rest on the creation of an aesthetic that, uh, that uh, relies on the notion of class purity. The notion of purity also indicates that the attitude towards caste of the middle class that is uh, characterized by the Brahminical values of sanitation and hygiene. Therefore, they may advocate shochita, what is called cleanliness, at a superficial level. But we uh, never, will never bother to notice the plight of those who clean the manholes of the cities. They will not raise their concern regarding the, regarding the manual scavenging which is host in human job in the world. Hence the association of caste and cleaning occupation is never part of the public sphere, primarily dominated by the middle class values. Parth Chatterjee argued that the that the politicization of the masses has prompted the process of the construction of forming their own community, consisting spatially bound interpersonally networked subculture with segregated and exclusive spaces for shops, restaurants, arts and entertainment. One can add here um, about the SEJ, the special economic zones, as a further extension of such exclusive spaces. Although special economic zones are not primarily a site of cultural consumption, but we should rate it here that uh, leisure industry is part of the broader economic changes. Ethic and Hill rightly point out that the reclamation of the land for private sector investment into multiplexes, shopping malls, amusement parks, special economic zones and other kinds of commercial activities is underway at an unprecedented level. And the legitimacy massy for grabbing of lands for these purposes is derived from what we discussed in the, in the very beginning of this lecture, the, the discourse of rising and signing India with world class or global cities. Hence the, the reorganization of the cities that we discussed in this lecture is part of this narrative. Ethic and Hill give the example of the demolition of almost 90,000 huts in Mumbai in the year 2005 for Vision Mumbai. The Vision Mumbai was the most visible example of a program that emphasized on reducing the population of slum dwellers in the city about 10 to 20 percent by displacing them and rendering them homeless and further pushing them to the peripheries of the cities where the new economic zones and industrial areas are constructed. This displaced masses will serve as the reserve army of cheap labor for the industrialists. As you know, the Commonwealth Games is another instant, instance in which uh, the narrative of global city was invoked to further serve the corporate interests. This has also displaced lakhs of people, hundreds and thousands of people. The discourse of India becoming a superpower, global cities and development is inextricably linked with the emergence of laser industry in India, which is further conversed with the notion of nationalism. The laser industry is just a cultural technology rendered into the service of furthering the industrialist plunder. Friends, we have come to the conclusion of this lecture. In this lecture, you learned about laser and consumption through the phenomenon of multiplex cinema in India. The multiplex cinema exemplifies the industrial reorganization of leisure in urban India. At the same time, it signifies the reorganization of cities. As you have seen, as we have discussed, the physical geography of multiplex is accompanied by a parallel change in the human geography. And we have finally come to the conclusion and at the end you will find uh, to read the literature uh, which should be very useful to you and also do attempt to respond to the questions. Thank you very much.